Hey everybody, today I'm going over my round three game in the same tournament that Matt is playing in, actually. Um, my first round I had to take a bye because I was just unavailable to play. Second round, my opponent didn't show up, so I didn't get to play that round either. So I'm in round three, but it's my first game. Um, so let's go over. My, uh, my opponent is rated about 1500. I never played him before. Um, and he starts the game out with e4. I've been really studying my Karo repertoire lately, so I was happy to see that. Get a standard Karo um, setup. Um, but then he plays f3, the fantasy variation. And this is not, these are not lines that I have looked at very closely at all within the past five or six months, I would say. And so I kind of got burned by being a little bit lazy because I just rarely see these variations. Um, and so I kind of know a little bit of what to do. I know we bring our queen out to b6 here, and we play for a quick uh, e5. Maybe we get the bishop out, we get this check, maybe win a piece or something. That doesn't happen or anything, but that's uh, kind of what I'm thinking in the game. And even after c3, I'm not sure what to do. Um, I kind of just went with e5 because it looked right, opening up this diagonal. I figured if he takes, I still have this bishop move. And there's going to be some trouble along this diagonal, so he can't really he can't really take. So I, I was happy with this. And after queen b3, I am pretty sure this is just completely out of book. And I saw a nice line here to give me a little positional advantage. And so I took the queen. He takes back, and I take the pawn. And I do give him this big center, but he has double isolated pawns in the b file. And if he ever like comes up too close to kind of like uh, do a minority attack. I can always play a6 and I'm able to just take and win an extra pawn. Of course, I need to make sure that my rook is defended. So I was good at this line and I thought that uh, this out of the opening, getting the dub double isolated pawns is enough to give up this big center and we'll kind of see how the game develops from here. Um, I play bishop e6, so basically just defending this pawn, not allowing a capture and a capture, and giving me uh, isolated d-pawns, I guess mutual isolated d-pawns. And here my opponent, I think, makes a mistake, um, knight c3, so this allows me to win a pawn. Pretty simple um, sequence here, I take here, you can either take with the knight or the pawn, but this pawn is defended and my bishop is accurating it. So I take, he takes back with the f-pawn, which I think is probably the best uh, move here and I grab the b3 pawn. So I out of the opening, I've won a pawn. Let's check the evaluation here to see what um, engine says. So yeah, I don't get full con uh, full pawn evaluation because um, white has a nice center here. Turn that off. Um, game continues, knight f3, knight f6, bishop d3, and I'm getting a little nervous that um, my bishop is going to get trapped actually because there's no available squares except for e6 right now so imagine my bishop doesn't cover this square if uh, this rook attacks my bishop i wouldn't really have anywhere to go other than um e6 so i was a little worried about white playing d5 here and cutting off this retreat and then somehow being able to attack my bishop and so i was maybe seeing ghosts a little bit but i played bishop e6 here one, another line I was concerned about if I just developed this bishop here is if they... Put, I forget the exact move order I was worried about. Maybe this one, and then then I could retreat. But I think I was maybe worried about this one first. I have to move my knight somewhere here. And now this bishop is really running low on squares. I guess maybe just here solves the problem. So I think I was a little bit seeing ghosts and retreated probably a bit too prematurely um, but just something i wanted to point out in the game just uh, showing my uh, thought process um, so i retreat um, black castles and i wanted to take one move to play uh, h6 because the knight coming in here is a problem and the bishop coming in here is a bit annoying too so uh, i went a bit slow with h6 and uh, computer actually approves of in uh, approves of this move but i want to point out that white is castled white has three uh, minor pieces developed and a huge center so i have an extra pawn but is it really worth it we can go back to the evaluation um, yeah, it's about equal, and I think that's right. Um, so the the more my opponent continues to develop rapidly, and I kind of wait around, <laughs> uh, I don't think things are going in my favor. 
All right, so I develop my bishop. He develops his bishop. Look at the setup. He's got everything he wants for the cost of a pawn. I castle, and he goes for a knight maneuver. And I can see he's trying to land a knight on f4 and attack this bishop. Um, I don't really want to allow him to capture here and me capture back, so I get into some shady territory. <laughs> um, I play g5 here to prevent this knight f4 move. And I think this is still okay for black. Uh, it's not like my favorite, because the next few moves kind of uh, show why it's maybe not the best thing in the world. So after h4, I push, he moves a knight. Um, this pawn is soon to be under attack. It is attacked by my knight right now, but my h6 pawn is also hanging. So I take care of both those problems. But here, he still has, uh, well, so he plays bishop g5 first, um, which is another thing I, I missed in the game. So obviously my knight is attacked and has one defender. Um, he can move, uh, bring another defender into it. So I'm under a little bit of pressure here. So I need to defend my bishop. And after rook f2, I thought this was a little slow. Um, I wasn't exactly sure, you know, what would be better. Um, but I was able to retreat my knight backwards. So I can trade off these pairs of bishops, which happens. Um, but then he plays a dagger of a move that I did not see in this whole variation, and that's knight f4. So I took a lot of time at this point because... Um, as far as I can tell, I'm just losing something because we don't really want him to attack to capture this bishop. Won't be the end of the world, but this pawn is also hanging. And so I looked at a bunch of different moves here to try to figure out how to you know, kind of like save the position. And there are so many tactical shots here, it's crazy. So if I go here, I believe it's just take, take, and then this ends the game. Wins a piece uh, and an exchange. Um, if I do something like here to defend the pawn, he can just take this bishop and there's no defender on my rook. I looked at um, rook here, and I think this also loses because of this, yeah, this sequence, and now my knight is hanging. hanging. And so I wasn't sure what to do. Um, I considered king g1, which looked fine. Um, and I also ultimately just chose bishop c8, just kind of getting my bishop out of the way, dropping this pawn, and um, realizing that my position is likely much worse. So if we go to the eval here, uh, yeah, it says like plus five, which I think is a bit extreme, but it makes sense given the next few moves. So let's look at the next few moves. Knight takes h5, king g8, knight f6 check, king up, and he takes this pawn. And I was actually happy to see him take this pawn because it allows me to completely liberate my position. If you look before, my rooks are on the back, back rank, miners on the back rank, this knight has nothing going for it, <laughs> no good squares available. And so this allows me to take here, he's going to have to recapture, and then I can develop my knight. So it does free up my position a little bit, despite the fact that I'm trading off a piece down a pawn. And at this juncture of the game, I realize I'm probably worse. I know I'm worse, um, but I still have a better pawn structure. And um, when all the dust settled, I'm only down one pawn. So four pawns versus five pawns, and we both have two miners and two rooks. So I was happy I at least kept the game alive back in, um, maybe back in like this position. It was looking really bad for me. I'm glad I came out only down a pawn after it was all said and done, and my position got to open up a little bit. All right, so I wasn't exactly sure what to do here, so I'm just going a3 so I can bring my rook into the game without that pawn hanging. Um, rook a3 makes sense. And here I was setting up a little bit of a trick. So if white just plays nothing like this, I thought I could play... Is it this move? I forgot what I was looking at in the game. Oh yeah, here, and I, I thought if he tried to push past, then I could take this, but it doesn't work because he can take back with the knight. I'm not sure what I was trying to set up here. Um, this is not how the game continued though. Rook b3, and I wanted to, of course, uh, retain my b pawn. Rook back to a3, attacking my a pawn, and here I decided to go passive and just kind of keep as many pawns on the board as I can. 
and my opponent played <clears throat> a very annoying move here, b3. And at first I thought it was just to prevent my knight from coming into the game, because um, both of those, especially the a4 square would be really nice, so I can kind of block um, white's attack. Played knight b6, but I didn't realize that this b3 move also allowed this rook to come in and double in on the a pawn. And this a pawn is unsavable, <laughs> and so I kind of realized that maybe a little bit too late. Um, so after he doubles on the a file, I just decide to counterattack on the d pawn. So we get some exchanges here on the d pawn. I'm a little surprised he didn't just take and we continue to trade off, but I guess in the end I would win the pawn back. So he retreats. I re uh, retreat my knight back to g7. Uh, luckily this pawn is defended by my knight. Um, g3, I wasn't entirely sure what to think about g3. Um, a slow move. I guess it uh, defends this pawn. Um, so what I'm thinking at this point of the game is I just want to solidify and kind of get everything together. So if you remember a few moves ago, wow, look at that. So a few moves ago we were plus five and now we're back into equal slash draw territory. The white is still better, of course, but we're still doing just fine. I felt at this point of the game, like I could save a draw. So I need to get these uh, miners a little more active. I can't move this uh, piece though because uh, my uh, pawn would hang. So I play knight c5, rook a7, uh, hitting the knight. So I need to defend the knight. And I've made a big blunder here. <laughs> King f6. And this allows a very simple tactic, take, take, and a fork, hitting my rook and my king. Uh, losing a piece and ending the game for the most part. So he takes, and um, this is not something I saw at all during the game until he actually took. Of course, after he took, I saw that this fork was coming. And so I'm down a piece, I'm down a pawn, trying to do everything I can just to kind of save the game here. And um, I decided to try to keep, his, keep the rooks on as much as I can. And uh, I can go over these next few moves pretty quickly because nothing really of note happens. Check just kind of moving around, bring my knight in. And here, actually, <laughs> um, I'm attacking his bishop. And he makes a mistake here because he takes my pawn. I take, and he plays b4, assuming he has this pin. But luckily, I have this check and I can get out of it. So I win the piece back, but I'm still down two pawns at this point. And um, this endgame is just completely lost. I tried my best to kind of get my knight near. I want, to, I want to say too, here it looks like I can just um, attack this whole pawn and win the pawn, but unfortunately he has knight d3 as soon as I move my knight away defending this pawn, and now my knight just has like nothing to do. His king is much more active than mine too, so I can't really get close with my king. And I actually think here I should have gone around this way, because after I played um, king g6, he plays g4, which is such a nice move. My king is completely locked out and can't move forward anywhere. So my king is very boxed in, and this was annoying. And so here I just try to get my knight a little closer. Um, not much to say over these moves. I eventually win the pawn, and then he just simplifies, and in this position I resigned. And so I uh, lost my game. This was round three. Next round, I'm paired down against an opponent rated about 1,000. So I hope I can win that one. Um, I'm hoping that I get <clears throat> another strong opponent in the last round to at least get a little bit of experience in. It's looking like I'm not going to be able to be paired against Matt, which is, which is unfortunate. Um, but um, I'm looking forward to my next couple games, and uh, thanks for watching, everybody.